What's up folks and welcome back to the garage. Uh, because of the circumstances I have my kids moped here. As you can see the engine or the, actually the cylinder is gone. We had a small issue with that that vehicle <laughs> but don't worry I got the spare parts today so first I will tell you what happened and uh, then I hope we can put it back together My kids moped is uh, 50cc, it's Kymco MXU uh, 50, uh, it's not 4x4, it's uh, rear wheel drive and uh, we took the cylinder and the piston off, the rod is still there but it's okay. Uh, I can tell you it was a quite a big job to take all the covers, <laughs> covers out, uh, so in normal moped this job is much much easier i actually calculated that it's been like 30 years <laughs> when i okay 30 uh, 29 years when i have last done this took a moped cylinder off and the piston so it was a good training for me too but now i will show you what we have there on the table i found the reason because my kid told me that uh, it, the engine st uh, just stopped and he tried to first use the starter and he, then he used the pedal but he said that it's, it feels that there's no uh, enough compression so then we did a compression test I googled that in this engine the compression should be 170 and we did a compression test and uh, we got only about 70 psi so it was less than 50 percent so then we already knew that there's something wrong with the with the cylinder or the piston and uh, actually we managed to find the reason quite soon you can see there there's a big scratch there's actually a piece of piston missing and uh, the rings are stuck as you can see from this angle you can see that there's uh, the the rings are totally totally stuck and they are pressed like pressed inside that piston and then we started to look what caused these marks and uh, I found actually this it's the pin which is broken and actually this this small piece was still here <laughs> so it was quite easy to find out what was the reason and uh, so from some reason that was broken and uh, if you look inside you can see huge cracks or scratches also here actually this is the, the biggest so this is totally uh, finished this cylinder so I ordered uh, we have in Finland this Mopo Sport local shop they almost overnight this to me I ordered this uh, on Monday and it's uh, Wednesday at uh, today so it took all, also a little over one day to get that package so I hope we have the right parts we should have everything you see here all the gaskets and uh, or actually this is not included and the, uh, the head but everything else should be in that box so next I hope we can or actually next we will do unboxing <laughs> and then I hope we can put the engine back together and uh, make a test start.
now we have all the parts ready we have a brand new piston and the piston rings perfect and we also already changed this flap system from the old cylinder to here and uh, there's the exhaust manifold uh, gasket i think this is some kind of aluminium no i don't think it's okay maybe aluminium and um, pins and all the gaskets so i think next i will put the, the rings on it's it should be quite easy there's also the ready places for for this so it should be quite easy task i i will use some oil to get this in and uh, i think we will put it like this before we put this cylinder back to the moped because it's much easier to do here on the table and then when it's like this we go and uh, put it back on and uh, i think that's the next phase I, where i'm using the the camera it's uh, it's a little bit difficult place to take some video so i'll be back when we have installed the new cylinder and now a few pro tips <laughs> uh, the piston is actually uh, different from this side you can see the the hole in the skirt right here and uh, instruction it, sa it says that place the piston on the connection rod with opening or openings of the piston skirt facing the rear transfer ports of the cylinder or align the piston rings gap opposite the exhaust port so it's just like this and actually actually the gap of the piston rings they are also in this side so now we now we can be sure that the piston is right side because this is the exhaust and now i'm just giving the tip how to tighten these these exhaust uh, screws or bolts i'm just using two nuts first i tighten them together and then i can uh, screw this bolt to the end yep and after those things it should be ready to put back on the operation going on here uh, as you can see the cylinder is already there we use these long bolts as a guide so we managed to get the gasket there quite okay and the piston is ready there and uh, next well okay I will show you the parts they are in line already so next we will put uh, uh, the head casket and the head bolts spark plug this gasket is for the carburetor and this is for the exhaust manifold for, or for the exhaust so few parts still left I think I'm using the torque wrench first time on a moped <laughs> And the uh, instruction says that tightening the nuts using the diagonal procedure using 1.2 kgm. So it's like 10 or 11 Newton meets, meters. So it will be a little bit difficult by this my torque wrench, but I do my best. Now we are putting the carburetor back on, four bolts it takes a while it's quite tight this this place here now you are opening it yes <laughs> stuck <laughs> yeah i will help you soon but now we manage to uh, torque these bolts 
and uh, they should be now okay they are like 11 newton meters at the moment so we keep going and we will be back soon the engine is now ready we managed to put even the exhaust it's it was quite uh, accurate job but we managed to do it <laughs> and we I've even tightened the spark plug and the carburetor is there on its place so now we have the engine back in one piece uh, next before we put all these parts back on I think we should do a test start and a short test drive to make sure that we managed to do everything right <laughs> and now it's time for test start <coughs> power on It's it's running, but as you notice that always when I'm uh, covering the air filter and it, uh, the engine gets uh, less air, it runs much better. So now I think I just have to make some carburetor tuning for this engine too. So I will try to find the right screws and uh, I'll be back soon. <laughs> what a mess. I had to open the door to get some fresh air because there's a fuel on the floor. I think about half a liter. <laughs> uh, I called my friend who is much better in these things than, than me and he uh, suggested that the engine doesn't get enough fuel and um, he advised me to check the, the fuel valve and uh, I first I checked how much uh, it gets fuel okay it, it was getting some but then I decided to take the valve off and uh, check these which are coming from straight from the from the tank and um, the flow was much bigger <laughs> so now I think that uh, I have a uh, a valve which is stuck full of junk so now I will clean that valve and I will try again if we get a better fuel flow because now I'm thinking it's running too lean because when I'm uh, covering the air filter it runs much better so I think it's it's not it doesn't get enough fuel now I have the valve here and uh, as you can see now you now you can see through okay not yet but soon okay where's the light <laughs> uh. yeah now you can see it's it's clean and uh, also from this this side now you can see right through the valve there was some junk so I think this was uh, stuck so now I just have to put it back together and uh, make a new test uh, I noticed that this filter is uh, full of junk and I'm consider considering to run the engine without this filter, but I make a test uh, and if this doesn't weaken the flow much, I will still use this before I get a new one, because I don't want that junk, which is coming from the tank, uh, 
to go to the carburetor because then I have to do a much bigger job. <laughs> well, now the valve is leaking a little bit and the, the fuel flow, uh, it might be enough, but uh, I'm not uh, totally satisfied. So my plan is that I will go and buy some new fuel line and new valve and a new uh, filter to make sure that the carburetor gets enough fuel. Oh yes, <laughs> finally it's running nice. <laughs> oh yes, uh, <laughs> now I managed to put all the covers back on, uh, but actually the bolts and nuts are still missing. I let my, my son to do that, it's his job. <laughs> I, I can tell you that putting all these covers back on is uh, quite, a, quite a job, and both sides are ready. And only waiting for the for the nuts and bolts. I even put all the covers and the wiring is now uh, on right places. So uh, I think it should be now even a little better better what what it was. Um, what I actually did, I tightened uh, these bolts. I just left those two loose, uh, uh, the intake manifold, so I think uh, it sucked air uh, under that, or, or <laughs> under that uh, intake manifold, so that's why it was a little bit tricky to tune it, uh, but now it's running nicely. Uh, I think that's the idle screw and uh, idle mixture screw is there behind uh, but it's um, it's missing a spring or I don't know if there should be a spring but it's it's totally loose so uh, it turns by itself by the vibration so I have to figure out how can I fix that should be should there be a spring or something like in Weber carburetors but otherwise it's it's running now very nice uh, this fuel valve is actually still leaking, even I put these clamps all there, but it's leaking somewhere there. And now when it's closed, uh, it still uh, lets some fuel go through it, so I have to order a new one. I actually bought today from local store a new valve. This is uh, Suzuki PV50, but it didn't fit. Uh, so. I didn't use that, so I think I have to order original one. And uh, it's also leaking a little bit sometimes, so that's why I also have to replace that. But otherwise, I think this moped is now ready for some action. This Kumko is now ready for rock and roll, so thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and uh, comments down below and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet do it right away and also remember to press the bell thanks for watching and see you soon